Hello. Uh, so, like Miles yesterday, uh, we has, he has that beginning slide to center himself. Uh, I thought I would play a song to more center you, not me, because this is totally nerve-wracking to be playing uh, in front of people. Um, but, but we'll see how this goes. Well, this is a song about rainbows, by the way, which is, ties into this. I'm just gonna stop, and I'll, I'll play a song later. It might be better, cause I, yeah, that okay, that was scary. Okay. Uh, so colors. Um, I really like colors. Um, I, I hope all of you like colors because you're here. Uh, who uses HSL kind of today a lot during there? Okay, love you people, cause you're near and dear to my heart. Who uses RGB a lot still? Okay, great. Love you people, too, because I can impose my worldview on you. Um, so hopefully by the end of this talk, you will decide, because of my, my, my plenty of evidence, that you should be using HSL. Um, so RGB, what is RGB? Uh, it's red, green, and blue. Um, so these are, this is an orange. Let's simplify this a little bit. So this is red. Um, so the problem here often is, like, you have, like, a red, and you want, a, oh, it's, you want a lighter version of that color. Um, so when you're, when you're just in red, green, or blue, it's pretty simple. Like 100 here, you add some to that, and you get a lighter red. Um, and that makes kind of intuitive sense. So same, same math works out pretty easily if you're dealing with pure green, pure blue. Um, but you end up getting into weird, weird areas here when like, you're trying to do the same thing with like, this orange. Um, if you kind of apply that same intuitive kind of like, I'm just going to add some numbers to this, to this RGB triplet, um, you end up like you get a lighter color, but it's not orange anymore, it's yellow now. Um, and so say, I don't know, like the blue, it was zero, I'm not going to add to, to zero, I'm going to leave it zero, it doesn't really help you. You're still yellow, um, and really what you're trying to do is you want this, this here uh, to go from this orange to this lighter orange, but this doesn't make sense anymore. Like you're adding like oh, some red, you're adding actually a lot of blue, um, and you're not adding much green. So that that really to me doesn't make any sense, um, and I don't think it makes sense to humans. Um, so what's going on here? Um, so RGB is if you look at a monitor, if you were to take like a big mag magnifying glass to this monitor, um, or you go like stare up in that like that projector up there, and hopefully not go blind then you're going to see like a pixel is made up of, for LEDs, uh, you get like a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED, and they're really close together, and they're really small, um, and they turn on and off at different like brightnesses. Um, and so what, they could be off at zero or fully on at 255. Um, and so at different weight, like at different intensities, uh, and since they're so small and far away from your eye, your eye kind of just like, doesn't perceive them anymore, and the light ends up adding together. And the light is really what's going on and mixing together to kind of form a different wavelength when it hits your eye. So, uh, so yeah, if you, if you deal with mixing lasers together all day long, then you should use RGB. Um, if not, then I would say that it's not cool anymore. It's not cool to be memorizing RGB hex triplets uh, to, to impress your friends. Um, RGB is not like brewing your own small batch coffee with a cordless screwdriver and microcontroller. It's more like this guy uh, on his commute uh, in San Francisco on his bus doing a line of cocaine off his iPhone. Um, RGB is just, it's not so uncool, it's cool again. It's not cool. Um, I'm actually wondering what like, this guy's thinking right here. He's like, oh, this guy behind me. Oh, he must be using RGB too. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, RGB is a color space, or color mode, or color model, um, which I learned yesterday, or other names for it. Um, so what is a color space? Sounds kind of scary, but not too scary. Uh, it's like X, Y, Z, um, so kind of like Cartesian coordinates. If I say that corner over the room, zero, 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 to get to me, 
you come like 100 feet along this wall. Sorry about the imperial units. I'm an uninformed American. Uh, like a meter or two this way and like two or three meters up to my head. And I can tell you where I am in the room. Um, and so similarly to here, if I kind of increase the red here, it goes along this axis and it becomes more red. If I increase the blue, it kind of comes off that, that axis and it's kind of like a purple. Uh, and I can kind of come up and I can see like there's this nice salmon color here. Um, and you can kind of see this entire space of color, and it's, it's cool. So you can like reference, it's a good way to reference colors. Um, you got all these reds over here, you get like grays up through the middle, uh, a nice little blue corner. Um, but again, to kind of go back to the analogy of kind of, or that example of lightening a color, um, I was like at this orange, and I really wanted to get like over to here, kind of. Um, and what we were doing is like we were kind of going up straight this way. So that direction and that angle there, like it, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and it's, it's analogous to like this position of where I am in the room. I want to tell everybody like if in an emergency to exit through that door over there. I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, like 100 feet that way and on the wall. And if I'm telling you in relation to me, I have to like do vector math and I give you a relative vector and that doesn't make any sense. Um, really what I'm trying to say is like, it's to my right, 100 feet that way, right? Um, and so that's polar coordinates, if you remember from like, I don't know, sixth, seventh grade geometry, um, which I remember learning and thinking like, this is weird. Um, but the one takeaway I remember from polar coordinates is that if you kind of reframe your problem or it kind of changes the problem statement, it actually ends up with sometimes simpler answers um, like this, where like I can say to my right and 100 feet. Um, so that's kind of what I want to do here. So I would say let's make our own color space. Um, what do I want out of this color space is I want to be able to communicate to another person somewhat intuitively like what color I'm talking about. Um, and I want to make like performing tasks on those colors more intuitive um, for, so you can like reason about it from first principles. Um, and so how would we do that? So let's, for example, if I want to describe the color of Jake the dog here, um, he's like a must, so if I'm going to try to tell you the color of Jake the dog, I, would, I wouldn't give you an RGB triplet. I would, I would probably say, you know, he's like mustard yellow. Um, or to kind of break that down a little, he's yellow, kind of like a muted yellow, and kind of darker, especially compared to like this yellow and this rainbow back here. Um, so let's break down kind of what I more naturally did to describe that color. Um, so take that rainbow, uh, which I alluded to at the very beginning with that badly played song. Um, and just put it into an array of, because we like to put things into arrays um, of, let's start with 12 colors. So I get the entire rainbow here. This is Roy G. Biv. So red, orange, yellow, greens, some random cyan, <laughs> a blue, maybe this is indigo, maybe this is violet, who knows. Um, and if I kind of just increase the number of buckets here, uh, we get to a nice little rainbow. And as you notice, like these are kind of thirds. So red is at zero, uh, green is at a third, blue is at a third, and kind of you get back to red. So I'm just ignore ignore why I'm doing 360, but I'm gonna go 360 because uh, it does make dividing this into thirds a little easier. So it's 120. So green's at 120, blue is at 240, and it kind of wraps around at 360 back to red. Um, so that specifies a color like on a rainbow. Great, that's one large step. Um, so how do I talk about kind of like the color of the sky or like the muted sea green. So if I wanted to like describe the nice mute like cast over or overcast uh, blue outside for the sky, um, I need to talk about saturation. Um, so if I pick a color on this rainbow of like this, this nice little blue here, which is pretty close, um, and then I want to like, yeah, on a scale of one to 10, I'd say the sky is somewhere around like a five today, at least earlier. Now it's actually a lot brighter. Um, and again, like to work with more colors here, let's just go up to 100. Okay. Uh, so now that gives us a lot of vocabulary already. So it gives us, again, a hue, um, a color from the rainbow, and then kind of how colorful that is. Um, and at the, uh, at the end of the spectrum, other end of the spectrum at zero, it's like the lack, total lack of the color was so gray. Um, so you'll, be, you'll notice that we're missing black and white here. Um, to kind of talk about black and white, um, I would kind of say it's kind of how much light is falling in color, how bright the room is in a sense. So if we turned off all the lights in here, it would be all black and we'd be in darkness. Um, and if we turn the lights way up to like crazy levels, we'd all be blinded and we'd just see white. That's my story anyway. Um, 
So again, same, you get, the, get where I'm going with this. So let's go to scale 100, 0 to 100. At the total lack of light, we're at darkness. And at full on lightness, we're all blinded and we see white. Um, at 50 is like that nice sweet spot where like you see all the colors in the room nicely. Um, OK, let's put it all together. So that I, I just backed out HSL. So hue, saturation, and lightness. Um, that's what HSL stands for. Um, so again, you can kind of see how everything ties. Like This is RGB down here, and this is HSL up here. Um, you can kind of see how, if I change, like rotate those hues, how like the RGB values kind of move around a little bit in a weird way. Uh, it goes through like some weird permutations. If I pick a color here and like a brightness here, and I kind of so if I go to like full saturation, so this this pink. Actually, I want to use let's use uh, this like blue again. Um, so if I'm at like full bright, so if I start down here. And I slowly ramp this up. I see blue and green going up, but no red. And then as I keep getting further, like red finally starts to kick in. And it kind of goes higher. So that kind of makes sense. Again, I'm not going to be able to tell you what color would cause what to happen. Um, the other cool thing, maybe, like relationship, that kind of makes sense is as you go from like full saturation down to less saturation, these like red, green, and blues kind of all merge together, um, which again, maybe makes sense uh, if, you're, if you play with this. Um, so great. So I can specify color, hopefully more intuitively than RGB, um, to another person. So what about making, doing some stuff with those colors? Um, so back to the original example of just lightening this orange. Um, so I have hue and saturation specified, and all I do is increase the lightness. So that's a lighter version of that orange. Um, this is me at the dentist uh, with my hygienist Linda and my little dog Coco, who likes to go with me, um, and make sure that Linda's not going to mess me up. Um, and so if I want a nice grayscale version of this photo, I would just desaturate these colors, and I get this, this more timeless photo. <laughs> uh, or like if I just want like maybe a cool washed out version, I can go to like around here. Um, so that's grayscaling a photo. That's cool. Um, and if you saw Amy's talk yesterday about making art, or you played with the lights in the other room, um, this also comes up often. Is um, th they were using HSL for a very specific reason, um, and that's actually if you've ever tried to like make a color palette with RGB, it doesn't make any sense like everything else. Um, but if you just okay, so say let's pick eh, like a nice red, a red I kind of like this like this cool looking red right here. I like this red based on the saturation lightness values I just picked and I just rotate through all the hues, I end up with like colors that kind of fit together. Um, and they, they, they go together. And if you tried to do this with RGB, you just end up with all these weird colors that just don't look right. Um, OK, hopefully I've convinced you that HSL is really awesome, um, and you want to use it. So how do you use it? Uh, so it's already kind of everywhere. Um, JSConf website, check out the body. So this is in. Uh, RGB hex triplet. If you mouse over this, it even tells you now you can shift click and you can see all these different color space things. Uh, and you can edit this. And if I just kind of change the hue, it goes through all the hues. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so all the tools that you use that support RGB, I'm, I will bet you some money, maybe not a lot of money, but some money that they will also support HSL. Um, and CSS fully supports HSL. All the browsers support HSL. You can just write that out. Um, and it'll, eh, so there's some maybe not support for it, but a preprocessor or other thing will actually just translate it for you. Um, OK. So, ah, uh, so I was just telling you all these cool things about HSL. Um, so if you were to, say, take all the people in the world that were really excited about like color and lighting, and like they have conferences together. They're actually called the Commission Internationale de l'Eclairage, uh, or CIE for short. Um, and it's kind of like all of us, except who really geek out about color and lighting and like how the eye works. And they like get together and have conferences, except they call them symposiums. Um, and, and they talk about all the stuff. So they actually have, they, they, they publish their own color space. It's called CIE Lab. Um, that is actually probably cooler than HSL. Um, 
It's like the new, the new Frank Ocean album of HSL. Um, not Kanye anymore, he's so passe. Um, <laughs> so, so if you want to talk about cool color spaces, I would love to talk to you about Lab. Um, and let's see, I do want to end on a song. Okay, Is it, are there any Elvis Presley fans in the audience? Okay, good. Oh, sorry then, I apologize ahead of time because I'm going to do injustice to his song. Okay, let's see. Conf has surely too much react, and so it goes that some things are meant to be. Take my word, take my unsolicited advice. Thank you, my name is Viznu. Um, these slides are at viznup.github.io. That's my name with a P on the end. GitHub, you probably use it. IO, some islands, HSL. Uh, so this is actually, this, is a, this kind of reads as a blog post if you actually like, go through these slides. So if you are too lazy to convince your coworker and you're convinced also of yourself uh, that you should use HSL, you can point them as these slides and they should make some, some sense by themselves. Uh, thank you again. <laughs>